covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com And welcome, everyone, to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael Ormenengay. I'm so happy to be back. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm drinking scotch. I'm Ben <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Keith Lane. <laughs> I'm Jesse Flint. Megan's here. Yes. Woo-hoo! And Jesse made it all the way up Woo-hoo! from Florida just to see us. You may know him from the uh, listener feedback show as Used Hair. Welcome, Jesse. Thanks Thank so you. much for making the trek up. Um, hope we don't scare you too bad in this. Oh no! <laughs> How do you like our awful weather? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It snowed in Phoenix. Snow, snow. Yes, my first two snow. days here, I saw snow and rain, and said, you know, I thought this was a desert. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did we. It was. So did we. We thought the same thing. <laughs> so uh, no, plus, anyway. plus, there are different names for snow. Did you guys know that? Apparently, uh, yeah, snow can be called grapple. Or well, that, grapple? yeah, that's when the snow blends with hail oh, and good. rain. So you know what it is because yeah. I had no idea. I learned that from Royal Norman on Twitter. Oh, okay. okay. Well, well there you go. Yeah, I so. was like, I'm an Arizonan. I don't need 40 words for snow. <laughs> <laughs> it's that white. It's crap. white stuff. <laughs> I know. I was sitting. In, I was sitting on my couch and I was looking out the window and going, "That looks like hail. <laughs> what? That looks like snow and rain. What the hell is going on?" <laughs> so we had to go out and make a snowman. If you nice look at my, uh, Actually, I, think it's, I think you call it a grapple man. Yeah, grapple man. That's it. If you, if and you grapple go, angels. If you go to my Facebook page. You can actually see the pictures I posted. I'm jealous there. we didn't get it. <clears throat> yeah, tiny no, we snowman. got. Yeah, we got rain. Yeah, yeah, right. I got rain on. <laughs> but this is the listener feedback show, so maybe we should get to some listener feedback. What the heck? You can call I the suppose. numbers 206 339 Trek. That's 206 339 8735. And we will comment on your comments just like this. Hey okay, guys, Steve from Indiana here. You got me thinking about porn parodies and comic book characters. <laughs> it just struck me the other day that. Kitty Pride, unfortunately, is a really good no. name for a porn star. No. <laughs> so from that, really? I think we might hear a commercial for a magazine in the future, no. something like this. Oh, no. Hey, in this special episode of Pantone at Night, <laughs> we talk to the White Queen herself how she gets into your head and into your bed. No. Ooh, frosty. <laughs> How far do those claws extend, Wolverine? Kitty Pride dishes the dirt. Ah, oh, You'll be surprised. Ooh, that's... schnicked. And in a very special episode from the DC Universe, we go talk t- to Mr. Miracle and his wife. <laughs> yes, Godfrey and Big Barda. How's life and living in the suburbs after being gods in New Genesis? <laughs> well, Barda says that every time Scott touches her mother box with his power rod, they still create a boom too, but oh. pick up your issue now. Oh, I need brain bleach now. Wow. Thank you. Schnicked. I can never yeah. read uh, Mr. Miracle again. Thank you. Wow. I'm going to have to poke out my mind's eye. <laughs> oh, that just hurt. Hey, Slicers. This is X Benedict from Texas. I just wanted to take a minute and thank you for the wonderful new Slice of Sci-Fi app. This definitely makes it easier to keep track of you on the go, as well as making feedback easier for everyone involved. I do have to say, though, that I have found two minor flaws with the app. One, for those of us listeners that happen to be a bit more hirsute than others, the ability to do video feedback is limited by the device we are using. The beard demanded more screen time. I'm sorry. This isn't so much a flaw in the app itself per se, but it is an issue for some of us anyways. And two, the only thing that could possibly make my beard more epic would be a lens flare button. I would appreciate that as soon as possible. Anyway, overall, I give this app a full beard stamp of approval. I look forward to more entertainment, and the beard looks forward to making more videos. Cheers, and have a nice day. <laughs> a lens flare. That was a, a lens flare great. app. We need, a, we need an Abrams app. The That's beard demanded more screen time. I didn't know that was, I, to be honest, uh, I thought that was like Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so now, Jesse, you said that you you downloaded the app, but you haven't had a chance to use it yet. Haven't had a chance to use it yet. Is there a reason for that, or you just you just because <laughs> you're a slacker? Just a slacker? I'm a slacker. Is that slacker. it? That what is kind of fan reason. are you? <laughs> the kind that travels all the way here. Oh, right. That is an excuse, huh? Pichon. He comes all the way from Orlando, Florida, to be on the show just so he doesn't have to use the iPhone app. See? Just so we can give him crap. I think I was that's also that's the other. Reason. I, I don't <laughs> miles from my procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get this thing to work properly. This is Sandra, the truck driver, and I finally oh, figured hi. out your phone app. Oh. Okay. And I was going to say, I just went and saw Warm Bodies this, this today. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. I picked up the book a couple days ago and listened to it on audio. They didn't change a lot. They did change the ending, but they didn't change much more. On a different note, uh, Zero Hour... Mm. On Hulu Plus, they have the pilot episode, and it was very, very good. I, I enjoyed it. it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to record it so I can watch it when I come home. Anyway, you guys have a safe one. Bye. Awesome. Here's the sad cool. thing about Zero Hour. Um, crappy ratings. Yeah. I really? love the conspiracy shows. I, I want it, it to work. I mean, it's got a Nazi submarine in the Antarctic. Oh, it's got the Ros- uh, Rosicrucians, too? Yeah, Rosicrucians. It's got cloning. It's very Boys of boys from Brazil, but it, um, it didn't do too well. So people, watch, watch, watch. Hard to watch it when you don't know when it's on. Thursdays. It got right by me. It's on. It's on Thursdays. What kind of nerd are you? One that had works a lot of hours. Bowie. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Bowie. Just, we're just That's catching it, up on the first season of Supernatural. Bowie, I say, I judge you. All right, Supernatural may be a little more important. <laughs> well, it, 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 you know, DVRs have been around a while. They're they're important. But there are only so many hours in the day. Mike. No, exactly. Fooey. no. <laughs> I say Fooey to you Fooey as well. To sleep. You don't want to know how many shows are on our DVR right now. Sleep oh, is no. overrated. I have maxed out the season pass limit on um, the DirecTV DVR in the living room at Brett's place. Wow. They won't, it won't let me add any more. So we have we have two other DVRs that I use. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll walk you into my kitchen and we'll talk about <laughs> not having enough time in your day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, Amanda in Tennessee, in East Tennessee. Uh, just watched the latest show. Uh, really liked it. Uh, the hospital series that King uh, Stephen King did on TV was Kingdom Hospital, and you guys forgot two other TV series that he did for TV. Uh, one with it, with Timothy Reed in it, or Tim Reed, and the other was Rose Red. Now that one scared the heck out of me. Anyway, um, really excited that I'm going to be possibly sending you another video. So, uh, yeah, um, I can't think of what else I was going to say. So, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Totally. Okay then. That cool. happens to everybody. Yeah, that's right. It's, yeah, you're it, like, you what? what? Camera, camera fright. You know, there yeah. you go. Don't <laughs> clarify that. Um, that Stephen King's it was a mini series. Was, was it? That was yes. was that the one with Tim Curry? Yeah, that's Pennywise. Ooh. Yes, that was disturbing. Yeah, it, it was pretty s- freaky. The Stand I, was I, also on TV, but I right, think it right. was. But that like was another mini series. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. There's a lot of Stephen King stuff that didn't make it to TV, but. Yeah. Hey, slicers! With all the talk about the new Star Wars movie coming out and people mentioning that oh yeah Ford, Hamill and Fisher have all been signed to reprise their original roles. I have a question. Yes. What about Billy D Williams? <laughs> oh, mm. we can only hope. Can you really do a, a new movie without Lando Calrissian? Right? Billy wow. D, Billy D, Billy D. Not Billy D. As huge of course as Fisher, Hamill and Ford. But, but certainly he played a key role in two of the films. I don't think that's going to be a problem. It's not like Billy D. Williams He's is doing, doing a lot, lot right lot. now. Yeah. <laughs> but the question well, is, does he want to do it? That's he better? True. Well, what about Chewbacca? Well, Chewbacca. yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know, it, it's it, it, we're going to have story on this later on this week. But, well, uh, yeah, a little bit. It's, it, yeah, I, I think it's it's this is going to be pretty epic, really. Mm-hmm. I well, can't we haven't heard the, we have not heard the last of the casting news. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. definitely not. No. Hey, slicers, rinse one here. I haven't been in touch much lately. I've been doing wedding stuff. I still consider Sedona the root cause for this, by the way. My fiance has this weird idea that the guy should be at least somewhat involved. 
this brings me to today's challenge to the Slice staff and listeners. We're looking for genre music suggestions for the recessional. Andrea is one of us, so she's on board with the idea of a tune that will make all the genre nerds in the audience smile. So what should we play that is genre? Celebratory, but not too over the top dramatic. Let me know if anyone has any ideas. Thanks. Wow. So not not too over the top dramatic just leaves out the Imperial March then. Right? Yeah, that's, oh, that's, 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 well, if you, I was thinking that's my the go-to. end of, uh, of New Hope. Yeah, end of New Hope. Well, that's, that's very, that's very, that, that is very celebratory. And also, if you want something that's kind of uh, very lyrically uh, romantic and beautiful, um, Ilea's theme from Star Trek, the motion picture. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. yeah, that's not bad. Ooh, any of the Star Trek. In, in any of the Star Trek Well, anything stuff. that Jerry Goldsmith wrote. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So we're not going to say the theme to Enterprise. Because no. Jerry Goldsmith didn't write that. No, no, we're no not. not that. Not that crap. No. <laughs> Toto from Dune. That'll there be you there. Go. You go. That's what you want. Or well, maybe like happy music, like maybe some, maybe like the the Hobbit theme from um, the Lord oh. of the Rings movies. It's yeah. like happy or celebratory because yeah. Hobbit's Hobbiton. like good party music, right? Like, oh, so yeah, somewhere there in there, go. there has to yeah. be. Um, but or even mm. when something's kind of majestic, uh, the the Gondor theme. Yeah. The wedding theme from Flash Gordon by Queen. <gasps> oh, nice. you know, that oh. worked. That, 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 I like that. That's the money. performance from the blue chick off of Fifth Element. <gasps> oh, yes. That's there you go. That's a good that's, 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 that would be amazing. That's, that's actually the mad, from an opera. That's an opera. It's, it's, it's from, the mad scene from um, yeah. Lucia. Yeah, yeah Lucia. Yes. So, I mean, it means that she Content just wise. killed her husband. Content wise. <laughs> right. so, you don't necessarily want the translation at the wedding. Uh, no, no, but it's a beautiful piece of music. It is gorgeous. And it would definitely it would definitely work. All right, so um, but I'm sure there's plenty we haven't thought of. So oh yeah, um, there's a lot. Uh, Let's get all... on that app and get your feedback in yeah. for Rincewin, folks. Hey, slicers, this is Trampus with a bit of geek parenting. So I recently bought the Buck Rogers series and have been watching it um, uh, with my Why? kids, and um, my <laughs> oldest son has really taken Ugh, to it. You know, like I was kind of wanting to share it. with them uh, some of the shows I watched when I was a kid. And so as I'm watching this, you know, a few things I noticed. First of all, the resemblance to uh, Battlestar Galactica exactly. oh, yeah. um, was much more obvious than what I remembered. It's Glenn uh, It's Larson. also campier than what I remembered. Oh, yeah. oh truly. But that's okay. Very I like cool. a good cheesy fun. And, uh, you know, I was the computers just really strike me because the mm-hmm. show seems to be a bit of a cautionary tale about computers. And... Um, at the same time, I'm looking at them. I'm like, boy, did we really develop computers differently than what they thought was? Oh like yeah. Um, although I gotta wonder, do you think that Doctor Theopolis is getting it on with Siri? Hello. Oh. Oh. Hello. I Buck. loved, I loved Buck Rogers. The one of the the first yeah. interview I ever did for Slice of Sci-Fi was at a Comic Con a few years ago, and it was. Um, uh, Colonel Wilma Deering and um, Buck Rogers. Oh, Aaron Gray. Aaron Gray. Yeah. And, I, they and were, Gil Gerard. And Gil Gerard. They were so fun. They were a, a hoot and a half. <laughs> and growing up, I watched it a lot. I mean, Colonel Wilma was fine, but I wanted to be Princess Ardala. She had all the like outfits with the big shoulder pads, and she was <laughs> she, she wore she was, bling. She was evil and hot. And, uh, you wanted to be evil and hot. I did. I did. I don't know. Evil and hot. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I, and she I, had all the best clothes. It's it, it's interesting. <laughs> he he brings up something interesting though. Um, we talk a lot about all the things that sci-fi in the past has gotten right about tech and mm-hmm. the future. Mm-hmm. We never talk about what it got what wrong, wrong. What it got really wrong. Right. Really you know, wrong. I, I'm I don't have anything right off the top of my head, but I know there's Jet a packs. ton of stuff. So here's Jet a, packs. here's Jet the packs. thing, right? I read an article um with I think it was William Gibson where he was talking about people are always like, ooh, you know, you predicted stuff, you predicted stuff. He's like, really? Like mm-hmm. if you look at everything in all my stuff, I may have hit a few but I miss way more than oh, I yeah. Yeah. He's like, there's all sorts of stuff I got wrong or I didn't predict. He's like, so most, he he says most sci-fi writers, you know, people talk about it, but it's because you pick the one or two things. Right. right. But there's so much else out there that people get wrong. It's kind of like Nostradamus, you know? Yeah, like people right. Are going, you can you know, make it oh, fit. Oh, he, you know, he, he got all the, he got this right and this right and this right. Yeah, but there's an entire book of stuff that he got wrong. Right. Yeah. right. So. Or, and I love the idea that they predicted it. It's not so much that somebody saw it and saw, hey, that's cool. Let's make that. Right? Well, it may have, like, although there is a lot egg. to that. 
chicken egg. There was a mm-hmm. lot of that, though. I mean, there you you have to admit. I mean, there is a lot of inspiration that comes from sci-fi yes. that has mm-hmm. it, it. It does filter into the tech that we see these Absolutely. days. Absolutely, but mm, there's a lot more that just doesn't work mm-hmm. the way that they think it's going to work. Yet. No. so it might be something <laughs> interesting. If you guys have some interesting ideas on this, use your iPhone app or uh, basically call the voicemail line. You know the number is two zero six three three nine Trek. That's two zero six three three nine eight seven three five. What do you think sci-fi got wrong? Really, really wrong. And I'm sure that somewhere the uh, the the app somehow appeared in Star Trek. Oh, I'm sure yeah. it there did. <laughs> That's on Martin's page. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Blackwood on Facebook. If you haven't checked it out. Oh, by the fantastic! Way. Hey, slice of sci-fi, Crazy Joe here. How you doing? Wanted to talk to you about the Hobbit menu from Denny's now. As it is pretty well known, I am not a big fan of fantasy. I'm a sci-fi guy, comic book guy, but when you get into magic and wizards, you start to lose me. So I haven't been that interested in seeing The Hobbit. It's not really my cup of tea. That said, I've eaten off The Hobbit menu at Denny's, and it is spectacular. The Hobbit Whole Breakfast is really good. I highly recommend The Hobbit Slam with Shire Sausage. I really would like to eat every item off that menu because it's some pretty good stuff. And I can honestly say that if you're like me and you're really not a fan of the Lord of the Rings, this Hobbit menu may be the best thing to ever spring forth from the imagination indirectly of J.R.R. Tolkien. At least that's what I think. Keep up the good work. Wow. Shire okay. sausage. Okay, so okay. we've re- <laughs> The like works only... of Tolkien down to Denny's. Yeah, it's movie versus food, guys. Well, to be wow. fair, and, and I, I don't, I never tried the, the the food there, so I don't know. But my understanding is that just because it was a Hobbit related type menu, that the, the the food that they were serving was still something that was already on the menu. All they did was give it a new name. They gave it a new name. Sure, yeah. uh-huh. sure. So mean, there was nothing effort. new. Okay, so, so who, 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 who eats forever. at Denny's and actually have ha- I have has not, had it? No, not I, I, I've, I've eaten there in the past, I but I haven't had any of the Hobbit stuff. Well, no right. Hobbit food. Okay, so, so it, it's worthwhile. Is it still going on right now? Well, I, don't I have know. no idea. Hmm. I haven't heard. I think Denny's should send us a whole bunch of money to go try their food. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. That's what we need. All Denny's episode. There we go. <laughs> hey, Slicers. This is X Benedict from Texas, and I was just calling in response to last week's voicemail show uh, where you talk about uh, live action versus anime, and I have to disagree with you a little bit there, Mike. Um, I do love me some live action coming from anime i don't really care what it is i do enjoy it i like seeing the way it comes out i like seeing if it's even possible and while sometimes it fails horribly and miserably it's still fun to watch uh but that's just my two cents worth so y'all have a nice day hmm okay well there's one for i it. kind of agree with him like one of my favorite anime cartoons when i was growing up was um uh in america we called it star blazers but it's a battleship yamato mm-hmm. i think it's called okay and uh, in Japan, they actually made it's it in Japanese. They actually made a live action version of that. <laughs> I have not seen it. I've only seen little bits of it here and there on YouTube. But everybody who has actually watched it said, I mean, it's it's kind of one of these shot for shot things. But they said it worked. Hmm. Mm. Well, and another one that I think was really kind of popular for a while, and I never got to see it, was the live action TV show of Sailor Moon, which I never thought. I didn't of, know they did that. I they did. did. They did, did a live that. action Sailor Moon, and I never got to see it. But I'm like, that's something. That with the crazy hair, I couldn't imagine translating, but I bet it would still be fun to do. Interesting. A lot of CGI. Maybe, yeah. I I, I went to a weird place. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mike. <laughs> Jesse, can imagine. Uh, any, have, are you an anime fan at all? Not really. I've, I've watched some here and there. Um, I think the best thing I ever watched was uh, Witch Hunter Robin. Oh, really yeah. Good. That was pretty decent. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Slicers, it's Kevin Batchelder. Hi, Kevin. Hey, I wanted to offer some comments about uh, the current season of Being Human UK. You folks mm-hmm. talked on a recent show about the fact that this will be the last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yes, while the entire cast has turned over, which often happens in UK-based shows once they get a few years in, mm-hmm. uh, i got to say the new group of folks is really excellent. Maybe not quite at the par of the original group, which was outstanding, but still they've got quite a good chemistry and it looks like some really interesting stuff going to be coming on this final series not airing in the u.s yet just uh uk but uh very strong and i would highly recommend it and, and uh by the way that? the ghost name was annie yes, yes. take care everybody 
you know, I, I I feel like I've really lost something because I got I, I don't have BBC America anymore. What? Oh, what? No, what I, happened? I, Cox took it away. What? What? Yeah, they we took, did. They took when it did off. When did we lose it? Those they, bastards. No, 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 it's there. It's just not on my package. Oh, and, not which is really package. bizarre they because they switched packages. On? I have I had I have like everything. I pay for everything, and they took BBC America. Away oh, from me. you're gonna lose your Doctor Who. I, I know. Would, I it's could terrible. not live without my BBC I America. Know. Neither could I. So mm. I don't know. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what. I'm going to do. I have to find it through alternate means or start looking for <clears throat> something else. Yeah. I'll, find, I'll, I'll, find, I'll find a way, but I mean, it, it's going to be tougher because it was really nice to actually just be able to flip through and yeah. see it every now and then. There is something to be said about having the cable. You know, you, you, you do tend to see things that you probably wouldn't go seek out because there's nothing else better on. Mm-hmm. I'm well, such a other- hardcore British mystery fan too, though. Like between the sci-fi that I would lose and like not being able to see Luther immediately, I mm. would just go fetal. I couldn't deal with that. Well, I the other nice, the other nice thing about having the BBC America, at least you know, for people of high definition televisions, is that you can get to see the HD broadcast. When you get these shows through um, <clears throat> alternate yeah. means, you're uh, kind of getting a so standard. Pretty. It's not so pretty. It pixelates. It looks yeah. a little ugly. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that's the trade-off. Uh, if you want to see something that really looks pristine. You wait yeah. until it shows up on, on and, cable. And, and, the, and it's just whoever is actually putting it up. I mean, yeah, you, you never know yeah. what it could It could be off somebody's cell phone sitting in front of their TV. You know, <laughs> yeah. you never That's know fun. what it's going to be. Hmm. So, uh, it's, so it's, sad. It's, it's really sad. It's a sad day for there's me. Other, there's <laughs> other alternate means. So. Yeah, well. That's not, we're working on you that. Come on over. Yeah, come few, go to somebody's house. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. that's the there first that's alternate a bad, there, That's a better one. <laughs> hey, you're paying for this. I'll, get, I'll be over. <laughs> bring the scotch. Bring the scotch. <laughs> Just bring the scotch. <laughs> there you go. Hi, guys. Amanda in East Tennessee. Just listen to the latest uh, voicemail show, and I've just got one thing to say to, I hate to say it, Fox later, but you continue to show everybody why Lance Neutron is smarter than you. There, I said it. Bye. Wow. So, so there was Fox Leader while I was gone. Yes, yeah. there was Fox Leader while you were gone. That <laughs> wow. was last week. Wow. I think I'm not sure if I'm glad I missed it or sad that well, I, I missed I, it. I, I watched it. I was watching the live feed. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was home sick that night, but I as, I as I watched it, I kept thinking, the only way I'm going to understand anything that Fox is saying is if I kind of, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I might figure out what the heck he's talking about because it was stream of consciousness like I've think, never seen. Uh, just like in every small other doses, thing like when yeah. we, like when we get him like every few months, he's really entertaining to me. And mm. I think when he was yes. regular, it was more of a problem. So um, I do think maybe Amanda's maybe right. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit of Fox goes a very <laughs> long way. <laughs> it, it does it that. Hey guys, Crazy Joe here. How you doing? Just listening to the last uh, voicemail show and you were talking about dial him for murder in 3d and the question was posed was that originally shot in 3d 3d and the answer given in the studio was no i could see why you would think that let me explain dial him for murder was greenlit in the middle of the 3d craze back in the 50s 60s i don't remember off the top of my year that was made but 3d was the big thing at the time and the studio insisted hitchcock had to shoot the movie in 3d so it was shot in 3d but by the time the movie was done being shot and ready to be released the 3d craze had kind of died out so the movie which was shot in 3d was released to theaters in 2d so it was never actually seen in 3d for many many years but that is the way it was shot all right talk to you later Talk to you later. Well, he is That's correct. He's right that. on that. He, he is correct about that. But that was the old cayenne blue, blue and red, blue mm-hmm. red, the blue red glasses 3D, yeah. not the not the, the Polaroid, not the polarized fluttering or the shutters flight, right. or whatever um, updated 3D. Which I'm not sure if I mean if they're planning on putting it out in the nostalgic old you know blue green, then great. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. You know, if you wanted to do it in that, that that'd be kind of That'd be kind of cool to go back Purely in for and for nostalgic do it. purposes. Yeah, 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 for nostalgia. Yeah, right. But yeah. I got the impression from the story that they were talking about actually updating it into the new mm-hmm. version, the new kind of 3D, which going from a 3D print of the old stuff to the I'm not sure that's, what that I don't know about the technology. Yeah. I don't know about the technology, <laughs> well, but I can't What they imagine might it'd be do great. is they might just kind of clean it up a little bit because with the old anamorphic version that you're describing, right. I, I remember I was watching um Creature from the Black Lagoon in 3D. 
And the depth, the depth of field really failed at many times. There were moments where something would look really great at a certain distance, but as it as it was coming closer, it, um, it so gets speak, all kinds it, of weird. It, yeah, it, the, uh, it, you'd start to get this very weird splitting effect. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So you were seeing something like this and like that. Hmm. So it didn't really work out too well. Uh, so if they're going to do dial M uh, or dial dial murder, yeah, dial M for murder. Dial, if they're going to they're going to convert uh, do that again in 3D, they might just clean it up a little bit. So that those uh, 3D discrepancies aren't quite so obvious. Maybe, maybe we'll see. I, I mean, if it goes out retro in the old style, that'd I be fun. I would see it in the old yeah. style. Yeah, I mean, they could be clean just it up for giggles. St- they, it's a good movie, right? They, they, so. Yeah, yeah, they could clean it up and still do an anamorphic. Yeah, could, mm. there could be mm. a new 3D craze, and they could do Terror in the Wax Museum. <laughs> <laughs> I love that film. There the guy you with go. the little paddle ball. Yeah. Dum dum dum. <laughs> well, uh, all the old 3D was just so cheesy. I mean, yeah. it was always it was, it was always gimmicky. Gimmick. Gimmick. Yeah. That's yeah. all it was. But it still is. I mean, to this day, it's still gimmicky. Very rarely is it to- totally thought out. Right? Exactly. Like you're up or, you know, even Avatar, as crappy as the, um, Hugo. the, the um, script was, it mm. was planned that way. Yeah. You know, it was gorgeous. Right. Hey, gang, it's Kevin Batchelder, And I wanted to recommend a movie that I think some of you might have heard of, but not everyone. <laughs> it's called John Dies at the End. Oh, yes. Now, I this really was done as a book this. a few years ago. It's now been uh, moved over as a movie. Uh, screenplay written by and the movie directed by none other than Don Caracelli. Now, if many folks remember him from his work on Bubba things Hotep. like uh, Bubba Hotep, yeah. uh, oh, the yeah. Phantasm mm-hmm. series, and uh, oh, yeah, the Phantasm. original uh, The Beastmaster. Love Phantasm. But it's Phantasm a pretty funky uh, genre film. I'm not sure if it's a great one, very honestly, but i got to tell you, I'm very much looking forward to watching it again. It's the type of movie you probably won't grasp the first time around. Um, one person, uh, one of the reviewers said that uh, trying to sum up this Movie is like trying to wallpaper fog. It just can't be done. <laughs> so uh, definitely worth a look. You want to support some uh, small cinema type thing, not big budget. Certainly the kind of thing to take a look at. It's in the- limited theatrical release right now, but it is available via all the video on demand services. Mm-hmm. You know, iTunes, Amazon, your cable company, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and coming to DVD in early April. So definitely, uh, definitely worth a look. Probably best watching it after you've had maybe a couple of beers or maybe some other type of substance that alters your perceptions. <laughs> Just saying. All right. Take care, gang. Very cool. Definitely going to check it out. I really want to see it. Yeah, I do too. What I want is some Sweet Leaf, I think. B. <laughs> Jeez, I'm tired of walking. I know that stupid gnome gave me a bum horse on purpose. It can't have been a coincidence it had a shoe blow out just as soon as I was outside of the castle. He ought to have his gnome butt out here walking with me. I really don't like the looks of that bridge. I guess I shouldn't have voted against that last tax hike for road repairs. Hey you, your mother wears chain mail. Huh? You're so stupid you think a broadsword is for fighting broads with. What the? Who are you? And where are you? I'm right here. Are those are your ears, or are you just tired of flying? Why are you insulting me? Because I'm a troll. So? Well, that's what trolls do. Hang out in chat rooms under bridges and insult people. You don't look like a troll. Oh, yeah? Those big teeth and all that hair, you look more like a werewolf to me. Look, you knew this was a low-budget tale when you started telling it. The casting director couldn't afford a troll. He couldn't afford a troll? Nah, he spent all his budget on the princess. She's a real hottie. Oh, yeah? Yep, damsel of the month and everything. You gonna rescue her? That's my mission. I hope you have some better armor than that to do it in. Why? Is the dragon that tough? Not for the dragon, stupid. The princess. I hear she's into clinky sex. Chainmail gets her hot. I think I can handle that. Now, why don't you move so I can get on with this journey? Nope. I'm supposed to stop you. What do you mean? Look, it says right here in the script. So it does. And then I keep you up until dawn and you turn to stone in the sunlight. Well, that's all different now. What do you mean? I'm not really a troll, so I won't turn to stone. Instead, I think I'll just eat you. Well, that's not in the script. Not my problem. This is your story. Yeah, well, um, could I see that script for a moment? Sure, here. You got a pencil on you? Yeah, here's one. There, that should do it. Should do what? Take care of my little problem with the, uh, troll on the bridge. What'd you do? I just added a hole in the bridge. What? Let me... Ah! That wasn't so hard now, was it? 
Hello, Slice here, Super Scotty from Canada. Just watched the last few episodes of Fringe and, uh, this is my cry face. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a weeper. It is, yep, definitely. It was. It was. Uh, you know, I, I I threw that in there. It's, it's I know it's kind of old, but uh, I threw that in there because... I, I'm really digging rewatching Fringe on from Science. the beginning. It's awesome, isn't it? Amazing. It, well, and not only that, but I mean, Science is rerunning them, and it's it's cool. Mm -hmm. It's cool to be able to see them still. I miss Anna Torp. I, I know. Oh, I was just thinking. I don't know why I thought of this, but if they ever did Valkyrie from the Thor series, she should She'd totally play Valkyrie. She could. Oh. She could. Yeah. Wow. Right. That's spot on. That's that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. An another another good idea. Great idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we never get stop paid doing for that. It. Hey guys, Amanda. Hey guys, Amanda in East Tennessee. Just wanting to let you guys know that Walmart is doing the pre-sales of Bioshock Infinite. If anybody is interested, they've got it for Xbox and PlayStation. Very cool. And I've been seeing that a lot of those uh, games are coming out. Yeah. So, so. Do, do we have one second to pimp the, um, the Vulcan poll? Absolutely. Go for it. So um, what did you say, Megan? It's called Pluto Rocks. I, I Pluto think Rocks. it's called Pluto Pluto Rocks. Rocks. Com. Com. Oh, good. Ben will because he voted. There yes. is, they've you know, discovered a, there's a new moon for Pluto that they're, they're taking a poll to see what people want to name it, and then it's going to go before a committee. Mm -hmm. And currently, mm -hmm. the leading vote getter, because Shatner's been pimping it, is calling it Vulcan. And well, and the cool thing about that is that it's traditionally named after mythology, so, so it, it totally works on fits. two levels. Yes, it does. so go vote, 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 because the voting ends, I believe, on February twenty fifth. Because how cool would it be to have a celestial body called Vulcan? That's right. <laughs> it would very, be very cool, and it would be in our solar system. Yeah, that, that's what's even cooler. So uh, definitely, uh, we will have the links on our website at sliceofsci-fi.com, of course. And you can go there and uh, check it out if you don't already know where it's at or you haven't seen it already. Shame on you. Yes, but um, hey, that's going to do it, I think. Is that it? Yeah. yeah that's it. Any cool. final thoughts, Jesse, our esteemed guest esteemed. in the studio? Wow. There you go. Well, I've never been esteemed before. No, fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're He's just esteemed. He's been broiled, uh, <laughs> cooked, but never esteemed. <laughs> yeah. uh, How about sous vide? Sous vide. Sous vide. Sous -vide. Nice. <laughs> Fancy. Someone's been watching Food Network. <laughs> That's right. It's all about the Food Network, baby. <laughs> sous vide and the anti griddle. Yeah. Hey, Hell's Kitchen <laughs> is coming back really soon. It's in March. I'm so happy. Did you watch the prison one? I did not. No, oh, no. I have Gordon not. Gordon Ramsay seen in it. prison? No. All no, right. I have not seen that yet. All right. We're going to done. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>